Today's toys are tougher than ever. Take the good guy dog. He can withstand heat. Hard impact. And the roughhouse play of a nine-year-old boy. He's Chucky. And this summer, he's back for more. In Universal Pictures, Child's Play 2. Action and dummy. Did you miss me? In his hit film debut, Chucky was just another good guy until he ran into crazed killer Charles Lee Ray. He's this bad man who got inside my good guy doll. After Chucky came apart at the seams, everyone thought the nightmare was over. They were wrong. And basically what Charles Lee Ray's soul was able to do was able to come back again when the doll was, was rebuilt. It had never left this piece of, of PVC plastic. He never left audiences either. People go crazy. It's unbelievable. People seem to have an inherent reaction to dolls. I think the fact that it's a toy and it's supposed to be cute, and everyone has had dolls or had sisters that had dolls, had dolls in the family, yet hiding behind this facade of a doll is this maniacal killer. I thought, you know, a foul-mouthed killer doll could be a pretty memorable villain. I mean, it needed to be something very that cartoonish. Red hair is always a, a sign of evil. Um, so red hair, freckles, the red sneakers, the suspenders, all of that, you know, just kind of a, a, a cute package. And this package doesn't come fully assembled. It takes over 500 feet of cable, nine operators, and Chucky designer Kevin Yeager to bring it all together. The hair had to be just the right shade of red and the and the eyes had to be just the right shade of blue, and you know, I had to have just a sweet smile. I'm gonna get you! But with the demanding action of Child's Play 2, ah! Chucky had to be more than just a pretty face. Um, in the first film, we used a little person um, and cut between the two. Kevin has now made it possible that we don't need a little person at all, that, uh, that Chucky does everything in the film himself. Don't move. And he does plenty. I wouldn't describe Chucky as an intellectual. He's more of a, an, a man of action. <laughs> uh, he's just out to, to may murder and, uh, and uh, raise hell all together. He's just pure nastiness in a, in a small form. He's a flirt. <laughs> Chucky's a flirt. He's a swine and proud of it. All the thrills don't just happen by accident. There has to be a plan. First thing we're going to start with is uh, Chucky inside the cage with Andy crawling up the conveyor belt, you know, and, and then get those stamps going. Kind of a parody of a Hitchcockian murder scene. Chucky arrives at the house, and of course his goal is to make his move on Andy, but he can't when he first arrives in the house because he sees that Jenny Agutter is there with him. So he has to bide his time, so um, the camera sort of cranes down, and, he, and he's backing away from the stairs into the living room, and he backs right into the Tommy doll. Shut up, you idiot. I'd like to be hugged. 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 So Chucky just like grabs this hugged. statue like and says, I'd like to be hugged. It's, it's a great scene. The biggest challenge, I think, uh, again, uh, for us, uh, the crew, was to get, and the puppeteers, was to get the doll to walk, to give a convincing walk. It takes all nine puppeteers to work. We got a guy, we got a guy on legs, a guy on uh, one arm, a guy on another arm. Uh, three facial puppeteers working the lips, the brows, the eyes, uh, a puppeteer on the head and body, you know, moving the doll. But it wasn't enough that he had to walk the walk. He had to talk the talk. You've been very naughty, Miss Kettlewell. We wanted something frightening, something that, um, I'm, I'm sure there, in the course of your life, there are people you sound, you sit next to and you talk to them, and they just don't sound right. And, and Brad Dourif was able to capture that quality perfectly. Uh, there's a, almost a Jack Nicholson kind of quality to it. It just doesn't seem right. It just kind of, you say, you know, I don't want my daughter around this guy. I hate kids. So we can coordinate the jaw and the, the finger movements to actually pronounce words on the, on the doll. He can say A-E-I-O-U. A, B, C, D. And Chucky's creators can pull the audience's strings, too. <laughs> I'd said to my wife for the first time that she saw it with an audience, I said, don't look at the screen, do this. And what she was seeing was, was people hold on and then grab onto somebody else. And that, that to me is good filmmaking. 
it's the greatest dating film in the world. So because they, they were always grabbing uh, each other. I think that they should have felt like they just gotten off a great roller coaster ride. Beware, Chucky's not the type of playmate you leave behind. I have one Chucky doll in the box, you know, and he's just like sort of entombed behind this plastic facade, and and that's kind of a chilling image. And people definitely do double takes. Also, I have one of those Chuckies with the suction cups that's sticking to the window, so when people approach the house, they're greeted by that. It, it, Definitely gets a reaction out of people. Sorry, Jack. Chucky's back. <laughs> hey, good. Easy. Rolling, tails late. Tell me when to go. All right. Action. I wouldn't describe Chucky as an intellectual. He's more of a, an, a man of action. <laughs> uh, he's just out to, to may murder and, uh, and uh, raise hell all together. He's just pure nastiness in a, in a small form. He's a flirt. Chucky's a flirt. He's a swine and proud of it. Don't fuck with the Chuck! Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the B-Movies Podcast presents The Chucky Files. My name is William Bibiani. Everyone calls me Bibbs. And today we're talking with Don Mancini about 1990s Child's Play 2. having a conversation with this before the episode began uh this was the part of the ad campaign uh yes. where the trailer was just this like really slowly turning jack in the box oh how creepy is that oh you know it's gonna come out you know it's gonna come out and then and then the foot stomps down yeah, yeah. sorry jack chucky's back i can't do it i'm no brad dorf and you came up with this well i came up with the foot stomp and the line sorry jack chucky's back in fact the um, the music box thing that was John Lafia's idea. Oh. John Lafia, the director of that movie, um, and then I, you know, wrung a twist on it. Um, but the 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 Universal marketing people were incredibly generous because the the campaign ended up ended up getting nominated for a Hollywood Reporter Key Art Award, and they included yeah. my name on the list. Is, that's very, very really, nice. really nice. But it was a really effective trailer. It scared it was. the living crap yeah. out of me when I was a kid. And again, we're still at the point where these movies have come out when I'm young, and I'm scared crapless of them, and I'm afraid to <laughs> see them. Uh, but then I saw it, and I actually really like this movie a lot. Thank you. This is actually, because this is kind of the one that's a little bit more like what I thought the original Child's Play was going to be from the trailers, where it's focused a lot more on almost like an episode of a sitcom where there's like a nice kid and then the mean kid's doing all the horrible things and everyone thinks <laughs> the, the, the nice kid's doing like a Mr. Belvedere or Hey Dude. Um, but what's interesting to me about this film 
is that you're just now you're writing it again, but you're stuck with all the things that they came up with in Child's Play 1 right. that you didn't come up with. Right. Uh, the, vo the voodoo mythology. The voodoo yeah. mythology, Charles Lee Ray as a character. Uh, was that easy, hard to wrap your head around? Um, no, but I mean, by that point, I, you know, I was on board, yeah. <laughs> you know, and I you didn't, didn't you weren't writing, thinking I, didn't have I just choice. sold I mean, my soul. I, no, I did you know, I, obviously I cannot be objective about this. Mm -hmm. Naturally, I felt my original concept was better. Ooh. Legions of people disagree. Uh, so, <laughs> well, they haven't seen you know, your original vision. That's, they? well, they never will, but that's well, the thing. Well, not with that attitude. <laughs> um... I'm I'm just uh, trying to be generous to mm. uh, the people that came up with that mythology. Right, no, and it's a lot <laughs> of fun. I'm, not, I'm, I'm definitely not decrying it in any way. But oh, it's I do, I'm to decrying it. Oh, it's well, stupid. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> But you embraced uh, it. Ade Due Tempola. But you, yeah, you, yes, we had yes. No, no choice but to embrace it. But I think John Lafia also was was we were of like minds mm -hmm. regarding that, and we wanted to minimize it as much as possible. Right. I mean, we still, you know, we still were stuck with the notion that 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 Tom Holland had created this idea that Chucky needed to transfer his soul specifically into Andy Barclay. And I never understood the rule there, where it's like, it's the first person you revealed well, yourself it's utterly, to. It's well, utterly it would be contrived. the babysitter then, wouldn't it? I it's mean, just, well, no, I think he means it quite literally. You know, okay. that like he literally said, my name is Charles oh, Lee Ray. Oh, okay. You know? That does so, make it better, okay. But it's still, it's, you kind of have to make a leap. Why is that in the book? That's you weird, You yeah. kind of have to make a leap, and you just kind of go with it, and I think people do. Mm -hmm. um, but we, you know, we tried to minimize that as much as possible. Possible. And, you know, it is useful as a as a plot momentum mechanism. You know, yeah. it's like it, it gives Chucky a very specific uh, goal. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to get to this kid to transfer. Yeah. I mean, my, you know, I, I was always, you know, ambivalent at best about the whole idea of that Chucky having that goal. I just thought, like, mm. well, why can't this just be a doll that likes to kill people? <laughs> um, anyway, we, we had that, so we used it. And, and, it, and it is useful. It is a yeah. useful mechanism. Now, you had the interesting task of bringing a villain back to life in a horror movie. And I thought that's always kind of fun in a sequel. You look at this a lot in, like, the Christopher Lee Dracula movies, where, like, ah, oh, we vaporized them. How do we do this? We're going to have to spend, like, half an hour... And you had a very clever way to do it, which is uh, now that the is a, uh, now that the company has been discredited uh, by this killer doll incident, right. they're going to reassemble the original doll just to prove that there's nothing wrong with it. Right. Whose idea was that? Was that just you coming up like I got it, middle of the night? I actually think that that specific idea might have been John's, mm -hmm. John Lafia's. I can't remember. Okay. Um, I, I do know that that with that idea and with this whole movie, I was able to bring back. A, from my original script that didn't make it into the first movie, a little bit more of a focus on that company. You yeah. know, and the machinations of, of the marketing and the mm -hmm. good guy dolls and the factory, you know, yeah. which this movie has the climax in the factory. Mm -hmm. That was the location of the climax in my original script. So that, you know, one of the nice things about doing sequels and, and at Infinitum is that, like, anything that, that doesn't quite feel right for this movie, you just put it in a file, you know, in yeah. a drawer, and then, you know, it's like you can recycle it for later. And there were a number of things in this movie um, that were holdovers from my original I, I imagine the death of the teacher <laughs> yes. uh, is definitely, feels Absolutely. like part of the original concept. Yes, that, that, again, because in my original script, because the doll was specifically targeting Andy's mm. enemies... Yeah. Now it's his teacher who's mean to him, and that's mm. so. You know, in in Child's Play too, in a way, it he doesn't, he has no real compelling need to kill her, other than mm. that he just likes to kill, which is fine. But it, again, his original impetus was he's going after uh, enemies of of the boy whose id he is of uh, expressing. So yeah, the teacher, the teacher, the factory. Mm. Um, I noticed that there's a lot more childlike elements. Well, part of it is the score, which is a lot more uh, music box, but also there's a lot of references to storybooks. Uh, reading Pinocchio, he's tied up like Gulliver's Travels at one point. Was that all intentional, or am I just being a pretentious film No, critic? no, no, no okay. that's true, absolutely. Yeah. And again, these, I think um, elements that were in my original script for Child's Play 1 that fell by the wayside and that we wanted to bring into this movie and kind of... You know, bring, j just make it a kind of inverted fairy tale. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that the first movie, because it has 
especially in its second half, it becomes a weird detective story. Yeah, you know, and, and you have to get the, the, you have the to get focus. The, it becomes yeah. this like policier movie, you know, <laughs> in a, in a, with a doll as well. You I know. mean, it takes so long for the parents to come on board and figure <clears> out what's going on. So you have to do that organically, and it's a problem and, because yeah. the audience is already totally way ahead, ahead of you. From the first you know, we're scene. watching Chris Randon and Catherine. Well, Catherine. it adds this element of frustration, <laughs> and I've and I've I've seen this in almost every movie where a child sees something horrible and the parents don't believe them. Yeah, where it's just you know I've vowed, and I think a lot of people in my generation have vowed. Uh, that when I have kids and they tell me uh, my doll is killing people, I'll be like, okay, well, we're getting the fuck rid of that doll. <laughs> that doll is evil. I just trust you on this. Right, better, what safe, if I'm wrong? better safe than sorry. Right, it's right. A doll. I don't care. You know, uh, there's a monster in my closet. Okay, we're going to move. You know? <laughs> and I think these movies are, are kind of part of that. Cause, and I think in this one, you get way more into Andy as a character. Because in Andy, in, in the first film, Andy's kind of blank. He's just an innocent kid. Yeah. And here we sense his frustration. We sense his fear. Um, there's a great scene where he he decides to like I'm gonna start trying to get over my my fear of this doll so I can stay with this foster family because what else am I That's gonna do? That's one of do? my favorite things in in that movie. Yeah, is his deciding that he since he's living with the foster family. Mm -hmm. Um, and they already have a good guy doll there, which of course looks exactly like Chucky. He yeah. takes it upon himself to be be down with it. You know, it's just like <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm cool with this doll. And of course, then Chucky comes into the household, mm. kills the Tommy doll <laughs> named after Tom Holland. Oh, and, nice. Uh, <laughs> well, we thought he would appreciate that. I mean, Very it's nice. an homage to Tom Holland. There you go. And, and he buries him in the backyard and then assumes his yeah. role. That just seemed hilariously Hitchcockian <laughs> with dolls. <laughs> Uh, was there now? So they brought you back onto this. John Lafie is onto this. Sounds like you had a decent working relationship yep. together. Uh, was there any new element coming into the film that was like thrust upon you by a studio or uh, anyone who's just like, well, we have to have this in the movie this time? Or did you have more free reign? Um, I don't recall anything really being foisted on us. I think you know. I mean, I wouldn't say I personally had free reign. Right. You know, I, I you know it was me and John Lafia and David mm -hmm. Kirshner, I think, together, kind of driving what this movie ultimately would be. Well, what about casting? For example, uh, Andy's mom isn't in this one. Right. She's written off. She's uh, in an insane asylum. Uh, was that just because the actress wasn't available, or was it she ever it's intended a, to be It's in the actually script? a good question because my original script um, actually had a scene that ended up finally getting into Curse, which is the um, the courtroom scene ah. with the with the evidence exhibit <laughs> A, you know, and having Chucky as a piece of evidence. Um, I had at the beginning of Child's Play two, and the Catherine Hicks ah. character was there. Um, I don't remember if, she, if she, I honestly don't know if she just didn't want to do it, if they didn't want to pay for her. Yeah. I'm not sure. You know, she, on Child's Play 1, she met and fell in love with Kevin Yeager, mm. who, who built the doll, and they got married. Yeah. Um, and they, so they were together, and Kevin Yeager was on Child's Play too. So you'd have thought we would have had an in. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I think if I'd had my druthers, I would want her in the movie. I think. Yeah. I, but I don't honestly remember. I think it was just kind of a, some for some reason a given that she was it was going to be a new story. Yeah. T tell me about the big action climax of this because it feels kind of Terminator. <laughs> The way that the doll is reconstructed and it's almost fetishized, and then at the end, it's this big industrial complex. Yep. Kill him with uh, machines that make him, basically. Right. Um, t tell me, tell me about that process. Did did you have to create around the set you were given, or was you just write anything and they made it work? Um, more the latter, really. And as I said, that um, sequence was in a slightly altered form. Was in my script for the original. Child's Play, mm -hmm. the first movie, you know, and, and it just didn't make it into the movie. So that was something that David Kirshner and John Lafie and I all wanted to do because we really loved the the location, the arena, and just as you described it, Ch Chucky being destroyed systematically by the machines that originally put him together. That was always the concept. We shot that in in a warehouse uh, up near Valencia. Yeah. Um, and so it was, you know, the whole thing was was built. So it was really, I mean, the the assembly line is like absurd. I mean, it doesn't yeah. make really make any sense. <laughs> and we just like came up with the eyes go like that, and you could just fall in and have your eyes poked. You should out have had and... a sign zero days since <laughs> right. last on site accident. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, before we're going to move into Child's Play three tomorrow, but uh, you had to 
kill off Chucky in this one, and you killed him off in a way that's very difficult to come back from. <laughs> was that part of, would you want to, like, I'm not going to do another one of these, I'm just going to kill him off as hard as I can. Like, how did you decide how to kill him off? Well, it wasn't that we wanted to be definitive. We wanted to seem definitive, because that's always the ideal way, is if, they, if the audience walks out with that feeling, there's no way they can bring him back now. <laughs> how are they going to bring him back? That's the ideal way to do it. Mm. It was really that I loved the fury. <laughs> 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 And I just, and, and if you look at it, it's shot in exactly the same way. I mean, we have like the different angles and we show him. <laughs> so it's just an homage to John Cassavetes blowing up. It's too late. I've spent too much time in this body. You asked for it. And now, Chucky's back. Oh, Oh, don't get out of the car, don't get out of the car. I watched half the movie like this. <laughs> <laughs> Bad boy. More Chuck for the buck. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Child's Play 2, rated R. Starts Friday at theaters everywhere. going to live with some people until my mom gets better. Yeah, I heard about that. Are you excited? Yeah, nervous, but excited. I think they're going to take very good care of you. So, how are you sleeping these days? Nightmare's still keeping you up? Andy? Sometimes. You want to talk about it? No. Oh, come on, Andy. Remember what I told you? Talking helps make the nightmares go away. You still dreaming about Chucky? Sometimes. But don't tell any of the kids. They might start making fun of me again. I promise. Well, Chucky was trying to take over my soul. Why? He was this bad man who got inside my good guy doll so he wouldn't have to go to hell. But then he wanted to get inside me. Why, Andy? Because if he stayed inside the doll too long, he'd be trapped in there. He needed me because I was the first person he told a secret to. What secret? That his real name was Charles Lee Ray. Boy, that's a scary dream. It was. Well, you know, dreams can't hurt you. Dreams aren't real. Right? Right. Got any yellow? You've been peeking at my hand. I don't care what it takes. You put a lid on this. Stick it in your ear. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chuck. Wanna play? Naturally, he was badly traumatized by the murders, but the Lakeshore Strangler, he murdered. A dozen people in this series of ritual voodoo killings. 
Well, I, I love a child with a lot of imagination. Don't Phil, you do please. Look, I'm just trying to make sure that we're not biting off a little more than we can chew. Are we even qualified to take care of a boy like this? Well, I understand your concern, Mr. Simpson, but I'm sure you can see that this is just a child's way of coping with a difficult situation. And he's fine now. He just wants to get on with his life. You game? Whatever makes you happy. Andy, you okay? Sister, I'm okay. This is it. What do you think? I've never lived in a house before. Just apartments. Well, you know what they say. A house just isn't a home without children. It's me. Yeah. No, no, no. Don't, don't hold dinner. I've, I've got a, a work plate again. No. Oh, I know. I know. I promised. I'm sorry. But this is why they give me the big box, right? Yeah. Okay. No. Me. Me too. Love you. Kiss, kiss. She's okay. Gabrielle, I guess who? <laughs> That's right. The, the vodka. Oh, the vodka. Of course I remember the vodka. Two-week anniversary. Think I forget the vodka? I know what that does to you. Okay, well, uh, wait for me. On my way. Ciao. Until somebody fesses up, you're both grounded. But I have a date tonight. Sorry. <sighs> I was thinking we should get something for Andy, make him feel more settled. Any ideas? Yeah, another Valium. <laughs> <laughs> that woman from the adoption agency called today. And? We were turned down again. What? Just aren't that many kids to go around. We're on the wait list. We've been on the damn wait list for over a year now. What more do we have to do? Did you tell them that you quit your job? That you spend all day cooped up in this house looking after other people's kids and, and getting your heart broken every time one of them leaves? They know all that. You just have to wait like everyone else. I'm sick of waiting. And I don't like seeing you go through this over and over again. In the meantime, I'm happy. Aren't you happy? I mean, we're making a difference in these kids' lives. Look at Andy. He's trying so hard to please us. I think he likes us. 
Um, I'm happy if you're happy. I am. You'll see. Everything's gonna be just fine. You know, we haven't gotten a decent night's sleep since he got here. Now, if you ask me, Joanne, that's cause for concern. Well, what are you suggesting we do? Send him back? Well, you don't have to make it sound so horrible. Have you any idea how traumatic that would be? <laughs> traumatic. Traumatic? For who, Joanne? For him or for you? All right, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that, but I'm worried about you know he's going to leave us eventually anyway. Kyle, too. They don't belong to us. I know that. Believe me, I know. I just... I wish I knew how I could help him. I wish I knew what we were doing wrong. Joanne, don't do that to yourself. And don't do it to me. We can only do our best with them. We can't be responsible for a child like Andy. He needs more help than we can give him. I, I got it. You think about what I said? Now, whatever you do, don't act nervous, okay? They'll smell a new kid a mile off. Okay, honey. Mm-hmm. Just shut up and drive before I kick your teeth in. going home where's home i have no idea looks like i'm stuck with you you'll deal with it
Sorry, Jack. Chucky's back. <laughs> How's it hanging, Phil? Child's Play 2. <laughs> He's the original. He'll take your breath away. <laughs> this fall, Chucky rules. Did you miss me, Andy? I sure missed you. Child's Play 2. Keep an eye out for it.